Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Good evening and thank you for joining us. The fight to prevent the spread of COVID-19 in Lloydminster is constantly evolving. Lloydminster's manager of emergency measures operation gave an update to the media today. Here for the uh, COVID-19 update for the city of Lloydminster. Uh, today's date, Thursday, April 16, 2020. We have three questions submitted by Primetime Local News. Uh, question one, are planned city infrastructure projects like road maintenance continuing ahead during the pandemic? So yes, the city of Lloydminster is moving forward with planned city infrastructure projects. Um, each project is being reviewed uh, to ensure that safety of the project is um, good to move forward during this COVID-19 outbreak. Um, things like road maintenance are still going ahead as weather cooperates. Um, with the weather, warm weather approaching, we are expecting to see potholes. So if residents do come across anything of concern, we encourage them to use the reporting tool available on the City of Lloydminster website slash report a concern. And question two, have there been any issues with residents disposing of personal protective equipment or tissues in the uh, blue or clear recycling bags left out for curbside collection? So most residents are abiding by the rules in place for the weekly curbside collection program. Having said that, uh, this past week the number of violations has increased. Anyone found in violation will have their item tagged and left behind by the garbage crews for the resident to correct and put out on the curb the following week. What we don't know for certain is whether or not residents are accidentally recycling their PPE or if they are un unaware of how to dispose of their personal protective equipment. Over the next few days, the city will be rolling out additional information to remind residents of what can go into the green and gray bins and what to include with recycling. Anyone looking for additional information is encouraged to visit the City of Lloydminster website slash curbside. And question number three, after the first long weekend of social distancing, how is compliance to the public health guidelines within the city? So we are in constant connection with our Lloydminster RCMP and I am pleased to say that the community continues to band together uh, in, re in these trying times. Um, there was a small amount of compliance issues brought forward but for the most part we are happy to say that everyone is working hard to promote social distancing. Our Abby St. John talked with Jennifer McEwen about maintaining a healthy lifestyle during this time. Today I'm joined here with Jennifer McEwen and today we're going to be talking about a um, little bit of a false claim that was made uh, not too long ago. A chiropractor uh, made a claim that tonic water and zinc will help prevent COVID-19. Now uh, if you read any article it says fake news, false claim, do not buy into it. But Jennifer you work at Popeyes, you're an ambassador for Popeyes. Zinc is a, uh, you can sell it in multivitamin as you've told me. Um, why, why would people think that zinc could help prevent COVID-19? What are kind of the properties in zinc um, and what kind of benefits do they give a person? So Zinc is essentially a trace element. It's a mineral that's found in our bodies already in a very low amount. And in order to keep our immune systems functioning properly and to the best of their abilities, uh, we do need to supplement that. A lot of times we get that already in our daily food. Um, we don't actually need a whole bunch to have our immune system stay on track, like anywhere between, I think the recommended dosage for a woman is about eight milligrams and an average man about 11. So in general, if you're eating healthy green veggies, um, having a multivitamin once a day or twice a day, you're probably already at the level that you need. Um, yeah, you find it in a lot of a lot of natural sources as well. So it's it's not something that's super rare. And I understand the whole um, sort of thought behind it that maybe boosting the immune system right now is a great idea. But let's not you know jump onto every propaganda wagon that we hear and run out and buy it in droves and you know elbow our neighbors trying to get it. Let's settle down and just think you know the basics. So the basics are: Do we have a multivitamin already? 
Perfect. Check your multivitamin. You probably have zinc in it. If you don't, there's a ton on the market. I just have some with me, of course, today so that you have a visual aid. Um, there's some on the market that have the right dose in it for you. Um, so it's easy. It's an easy step. It's nothing that you have to, you know, run out and buy and in bulk and stock up and, you know, freak out about it. It's, it's pretty simple. It can be in your diet already, too. Now, they're saying that they don't really know if any kind of supplements or anything like that will help prevent it. But, you know, taking multivitamins and supplements like that could just help change your lifestyle. And seeing as that we are in, you know, you have to do social distancing and you can't go out all the time uh, just to, you know, pick up a few things. But yeah. So what are things that people can do to stay healthy or, you know, get into a more healthier lifestyle now that they do have a lot of more time on their hands? Absolutely. So look at your basic daily routine. Okay, so your body itself, we you need a multivitamin that's going to have all the vitamins and minerals in it that you need just to function at, you know, the optimal level and perhaps boost that immune system that maybe you don't know if it's sluggish. Maybe you've been not sleeping to the best that you could be or for some reason, you know, midday you're kind of dragging and you don't feel like, you know, everybody's routine is different now. Everybody's sort of borderline depressed. I mean, we're not outside. It's not quite summer or spring even yet. Like there's a lot of outside factors playing into um, our moods and our daily routines. And so some of the easy things, easy switches, multivitamins for sure watch your diet put in a protein powder this kind of protein powder has a multivitamin in it already so like one scoop of that and you've got it all covered super simple if you don't want to take pills and you don't want to you know count all these things like one container on your shelf and you're good to go um, having a probiotic those are important to help with your gut and intestinal function um, having your gut bacteria at a healthy level to help you flush out all those anti, like get the antioxidants working and get rid of things that might be lingering in your guts that you do not need that are bringing you down. Those three things, you know, along with a healthy diet and water, like you're going to be golden. You're going to feel better. Your body will function better. If you can't digest vegetables properly, have greens, like it's, it's all there. And like Popeye's, for example, I started off as a brand ambassador there. I now work in, at the retail store in Lloydminster. So um, we are still open. You can still come in if you're comfortable and feeling well. You know, one person from household can come in at a time. Talk to me personally about what's going on, what you're feeling. I'll help you no problem no problem at all don't want to come in feeling a little weary about going out phone in the store we do delivery you can get it shipped to you like there's so many options now with the internet um you can pretty much order anything you want online and we're no exception everything is up and running and uh, the same service as before you know we're friendly we're not judging you right most of the stores locally they're locally owned or locally employed and there's going to be someone you know there that's willing to help you all right. Well, that was great information and hopefully uh, it did share some light on or shed some light on some of the misconceptions that have been going around. Unfortunately, yeah. we don't have anything to take really that will prevent it. I wish we did, no. but for now, I think we should just, you know, stick to, you know, getting a little bit more healthier if that is the case. And then, you know, just working on ways to keep your immune system strong. I think that's perfect. So thank you for your expertise once again. Um, it was greatly appreciated. Thanks, Abby. Thanks for having me. Many people are stepping up and R&D plumbing and heating is no different. Eric Bay has more on how the local business is bringing a smile to, fa to the faces of those in need. I'm pleased to be joined by Ryan McDuff of R&D Plumbing and Heating. Ryan, thank you for joining me today. And now you guys are doing your part, trying to spread some cheer in the community. You do have your mascot going around. So tell me what you guys have going on there and where the idea came from to start that. So Danica um, had the idea. She was at home with her, her son and she actually called in and said, hey, can, do you think we could do this? And she talked to Deanna, our general manager, and they kind of ran with it. And our Mark, our safety guy, does a lot of our, our video and stuff. Um, they kind of ran with it. And uh, we got uh, some gift, little gift cards for, for McDonald's. And we had uh, a bunch of promo stuff for the trade shows. So we threw kind of threw that in there. And we sent it out. And we were only expecting to do one, <laughs> one there for the for the person and it was unbelievable the response we've got we've done up to nine or ten a day 
and it's been fun. Like uh, we've had Danica has been in the duck. Jessica, one of our salespeople, has been in the duck. My daughter's been in the duck suit, um, and Deanna's daughter. And it, uh, we're, I'm typically driving them around uh, after hours and on the weekends. And uh, it's it's actually pretty fun. And I enjoy it because just watching the kids, uh, they, get, they get pretty excited to see that duck. That's awesome. And now you guys aren't just giving out wishes. You guys are also helping by delivering groceries to seniors and others who need it around town. So tell me how you guys got involved with that, since that's not really your guys' job description. No, it was, uh, it's just something that we're here. And uh, obviously the, the work, like, actually, we are pretty busy right now, but the workload is a little bit lower uh, for people that are at home uh, isolating um we just you know what we can help out a little bit so um and then again that was uh one of our, our managers uh ideas and kind of threw it out there and we've we've done done quite a few actually and it's uh it's been it, it's been good too so we've enjoyed doing it and obviously a great example of stepping up especially in tough times tell me how important it was for you guys to do your part do a little bit to help spread some cheer you know give people their groceries here in this community oh it's this is uh the community ministers what's uh, made our d so um for us to i guess do a little bit uh and it's, yeah, to me it's not a big a big thing that we're doing but it it has brought a lot of uh, the ducks brought a lot of happiness uh to people I've, I've seen it firsthand and and then the groceries you're just you're stuck at home with you don't have uh, family or uh, or friends around that can go do that for you then what do you do and there there is a lot of that in my mister so um yeah we're just trying to chip in and do our part and, and make the best of a, a tough situation and now if anybody does want some help either from your mascot or getting their groceries delivered how can they get in touch with you guys and set that up is all they got to do is call uh, uh, 780-875-9435 and just, just let us know what you need or your request and we will try and make that happen. All right. Thank you so much for taking the time with me today and we really appreciate what you guys are doing out here in Lloydminster. No, hey, thanks for doing this. We appreciate that too. Stay with us. More primetime local news after the break. Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. I'm joined here with Alyssa Dopko and she's the president of the Infusion Dance Festival and you know now would usually be the time where you guys would have a lot of festivals and a lot of your shows but with that you guys have actually had to cancel your festival. Yeah, you bet. So um, our festival this year was April 2nd to 5th and um, due to COVID we had to uh, we were going to postpone, um, but recently we made the tough decision to cancel our 2020 festival completely um, in regards to the health and safety of our dancers. Um, and uh, we just wanted to bring some certainty in times of uncertainty as well. So to keep postponing um, was a little bit stressful, I think, for studio owners, for parents, um, and for us as well. And then you mentioned that also on your guys' Facebook page that you guys are going to be running a virtual festival. So can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so we wanted to be able to still bring dance to our community. And uh, we wanted to bring some joy to our dancers and uh, dancers near and far. So we decided to do a virtual festival where dancers will be able to submit a video of their solos and they will receive adjudication from an accredited adjudicator and then they will receive um, a an award so uh, black gold gold silver bronze and then uh, a mark award as well so we just wanted to be able to keep doing something this year and we decided that this was going to be the most successful way to do so and then also you guys said that you are going to be running some online seminars so can you talk a bit about how that's going to work 
Yeah, so we are just in the process of rolling that all out. Um, so what we are hoping to do um, is get some uh, dance teachers on board. We have a couple right now, and they are going to do um, some Zoom call sessions. So we'll just post it on our Facebook page. Um, we may have some Facebook Lives in there. Um, and dancers can just join in and um, be able to dance at home. And so we're really excited to bring some of these top-notch dance teachers to our uh, Facebook page and to be able to provide that opportunity to dancers to just keep dancing. I know right now it's probably really hard, especially for the graduating dancers as this is their last year to perform. And so, um, especially with our virtual festival and now having these online seminars, you know, they are still able to um, perform in some capacity as well. So for anybody interested in checking that out, our Facebook page is still called Dancing on the Border. Um, as of April 23rd, it will change to Infusion Dance. Um, but right now we're still there. And with the online seminars and, you know, some other things, what are some tips that you're trying to give to your dancers to really stay involved and, and keep up with their dancing? Um, we just, I mean, our best tip is just to keep dancing. Find that space in your house and um, peek around. So just through uh, me browsing our Instagram and Facebook, there are a ton of really amazing instructors that are offering free classes. Um, and lots of graduating dancers, you know, um, you go on and you continue dancing, whether that be in Toronto or Vancouver on cruise ships. And so it's really important during this time um, not to stop dancing and to enter these uh, virtual dance festivals. I know we've noticed a couple going on. It's a really great opportunity to still receive um, critiques and advice from amazing adjudicators and um, being part of these online dance classes are also an awesome way to um, just stay active, stay fit, get noticed, and work on your technique. Um, so right now, just don't get thumbs out and use all of the resources you can. And for you guys, you know, you had to cancel this year's festival. Have you really taken that into when you're going to do for planning next year's festival? Um, so right now, we have taken this as a bit of a jump start. So, um, we recently changed our name. Uh, this year was the first year of us being in uh, Infusion Dance Festival. So, um, you know, we've been doing a lot of rebranding. Um, and so with rebranding, we also wanted to um, make some really positive changes to our festival. This was our 17th year. So next year is our 18th annual dance festival. And it's been an honor being a dance festival in the Border City for 18 years. We have so many amazing sponsors and supporters to thank um, that have helped us get this far. And so as a thank you to our sponsors and to our dancers, to our dance teachers, to everyone who attends our festival and supports our festival, we're taking this time away to just make it um, bigger and better to, to be able to provide our dancers with a cutting edge dance festival. So. Um, right now, you know, we will be looking at the adjudicators we bring in for next year. We are going to look at providing workshops. So um, we're hoping to provide another workshop again um, in October as we just did our first one um, this year and we had an awesome turnout in January. Um, so we want to be able to, to bring some cutting edge dance instructors to our board city and provide dancers workshops. So we're going to look at that. We're going to look at instructors that we can bring to our festival to continue um, providing workshops um, and just, you know, revamping, um, you know, our marketing system and stuff like that in our festival to make sure that we're staying on track with some of those bigger city festivals and bringing that to our border city. And for anyone looking for information, it's all on your guys' Facebook page? Yeah, so our Instagram page has switched over and that is infusion.dance and our Facebook page is still Dancing on the Border. Um, but like I said, as of April 23rd, the name will change to Infusion Dance. Awesome. Well, thank you for joining us today and best of luck with the future. Thank you very much. It was an honor to be able to share this with you. Thank you. Earlier, I had the chance to chat with Canadian country star Aaron Goodman to talk about how he's handling the COVID-19 pandemic. All right. I'm very pleased to be joined with Aaron Goodman today. Aaron, first off, thanks a lot for chatting with me. Thank you so much for uh, giving me a call. It's good to see you. Yeah, you too. It's good. It's been a while. It's been about a year or so. So um, I guess, how have you been handling COVID personally? Uh, well, after the initial uh, kind of shock of it, it was really shocking to us 
you know, when you have musicians that make their living on the road and, and you know, out there playing music, that's what I do best. And uh, so that was very threatened <laughs> right off the bat. So it was really hard to get used to the idea of not uh, not being able to leave the house or leave or go anywhere. And um, shows started to get canceled and uh, it was really hard to deal with at first. And uh, of course, you know, you've mentioned your tour being canceled. How much of a blow was that to you personally? Uh, it's it's so hard. Um, we we had um, we had a bunch of uh, shows lined up in the south east part of the U.S. with twelve different shows, and um, we haven't toured the U.S. as much as uh, we would like to, and we had the opportunity to do that. So it kind of came at a really bad time for us. But uh, that being said, you know it's uh, what do you do? You know you can't uh, you can't uh, you can't really do anything about it. You know it's really important that we all stay home and stay healthy. So. Absolutely. And uh, like many artists, you know, they've been doing some Instagram concerts as well. Have you been doing anything or plan to do any kind of things like that for your fans? Yeah, tons. We, um, we have so, we have so many more coming up. We started doing takeovers for a few radio stations and uh, started, um, we're, we're now talking about finding ways to do concerts online and do w ways to connect with fans and, and, I guess the only positive of this is we know that everybody's sitting at home and, and probably bored out of their minds. So um, it's really important for guys like me to um, get on, get live, and uh, just go talk to the fans where they're sitting at home. It's 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 so hard not being out there, and this is really the only thing that we can do. It's the second best thing that we can do um, until this whole thing kind of passes and it's all over. So. Absolutely. And uh, we did talk a little bit off camera. You know, you elected to stay in Nashville. I know a lot of some other artists have chose to come home. Um, what was the decision behind to stay there? And also just what's been the general mood down there? Well, um, I feel like the U.S. might have it a little bit worse than Canada. I think maybe Canada probably got ahead of it a little bit more. Um, I am so ingrained in um, being here close to Nashville. I've been here almost 10 years and uh, my wife is from here, and uh, so I had to kind of take everything into consideration. My wife's uh, mom, my mother-in-law is a nurse, and uh, you know, my parents were like, my parent, my dad was actually down here um, working on my house, doing some renovations. Um, that's why I have a giant mess behind me. Um, but uh, working on the house to, you know, to so he elected to go back as soon as he found out, and uh, mom was kind of at home alone, so. Um, so he had, he headed back. I stayed here. I, like I said, I've been so ingrained in this community and I feel like this is like where I'm from and this is where I live. And so I thought it was really important that I just stay put where I'm at with my wife. And, um, you know, I have my mother-in-law and I do have some family here. So, um, regard, you know, so no matter what happens, I think I would be okay. So that was my decision behind that. So. Absolutely. And, and lastly, just before we wrap things up here, you have this new fan, the jam platform that I found really interesting. Do you just want to touch a little bit more about that? Yeah, I love, it's so amazing. It's uh, in this specific time, if I bugged my manager about this, about having an exclusive content website for artists, um, specifically for me so that I could reach my fans uh, in a way, no matter what. And so what's really exciting is this is all online. So it's, uh, it's kind of, like, it's like a hand sanitizer company, you know, it thrives in, uh, in times like these. So um, what it is, is it's a, it's a small membership. Um, it allows uh, fans to get on, hear a new song every month. Um, we do live uh, free concerts for them, um, like on a monthly basis now that COVID has happened. And um, so it's just a really great way for, for me to engage with uh, the fans that are, consider themselves to be you know, super fans and, and of what I do. So. so Aaron, where can people go to get more information or if they want to subscribe to the website? Uh, you just go to fanthejam.com, fanthejam.com, and uh, you use the uh, forward slash Aaron Goodvin, my name. And then uh, there's a place there to put in a code. You just put in the code one free, O-N-E-F-R-E-E, -E, and it'll get you in um, to all that awesome content um, and give you something to do in these uh, in these crazy at home times. Well, Aaron, thanks a lot for joining us as always. It's always great to talk to you and really appreciate your time. Always great to see you, Connor. Welcome back. Our Evan Kenny chatted with Lloydminster Bobcats assistant coach Chris Weeb.
Joining me today is current assistant coach with the Lloydminster Bobcats, Chris Weeb. Uh, Chris, thanks for taking this time. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Now, Chris, you know, between uh, coaching and your playing career, you've had quite the career, uh, and it all really started off in Lloyd Minster playing for the Blazers at that time, if I'm correct. Yeah. 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 What was that experience like, especially, you know, being a Lloyd Minster guy? Uh, you know what? That was really special. Um, it was at a time where uh, the organization was on ice for sure, was struggling. I think uh, off ice financially, it was struggling. Um, it was, uh, uh, I think that they had, they, you know, they were coming off of a season where they had very few wins. Um, Gord Thibodeau came in halfway through that year, I believe. Um, and I think that they had kind of scratched and clawed and maybe even made it to within one point of the playoffs, but still, you know, I can remember watching, uh, that team and, and not really knowing uh, how good or bad they were at that time uh, as a young kid in my earlier days going to the games, um, just wanting to be a part of that organization, thinking it was so cool to be a Blazer or, you know, I can still remember watching Lancer games when I was uh, really young. Um, that was the only organization that I, um, I mean, it was a no brainer. I guess uh, would be a better term. I'd been recruited by Camrose. It was their first year in the league. Uh, new to the recruiting process. I really, I still kind of, I've never really talked about it, but I, I remember getting a call from Boris Rebelka um, and basically sifting through the conversation. All I heard was that we have a college here, Augustana. And I was 15 and hung up the phone and said, you know, I, I think a college just phoned me. Um, realizing later on that it was their junior team, but, uh, you know, Gord had come in and kind of turned that organizer was, it was working on turning that organization around, um, went to a spring camp and, uh, they signed me out of, out of spring camp as a 15 year old. And again, I remember, uh, very vividly the, the conversation that we had. It was at the, uh, it was the old Wayside Inn Hotel. That's where their office was, which is the, the best Western, I think, now maybe. Um, they had a, an office there, and uh, my parents sat in, and he said, you know, we, we'd like to have you in our organization. You're young. The reality is that you probably won't play next year, um, but, but we want you. And asked me what I thought, and it was no questions asked I was going to sign so um it was a it was a special special place to play I was at home it was somewhere that I that I wanted to be and uh and there was yeah there was no question that that this is where I wanted to to play and, and kind of progress my career and then uh after four years there you went on and played four years of school hockey uh you know what was that choice like I guess you know I guess even going further back the choice between maybe major junior and AJHL uh, and then going the school route. Did you always plan on doing that or was it sort of, you know, spur of the moment kind of thing? You know, the Western league was so, so prevalent at that point. Um, that was all you really heard of. Um, I wanted to be drafted by the, into the Western league. Um, just because I was under the impression that if you didn't get drafted, then pretty much your hockey career was over. Um, to a certain extent, I think that's still kind of a mindset. We have a little bit more knowledge about college hockey, Canadian and in the U.S. Um, but unfortunately, at that time, it was uh, you wanted to you wanted to get into the Western League. Uh, otherwise, you weren't ever going to make it. Although I wanted to be drafted, I really I knew that I wanted to go to school. I don't know why uh, the NCAA always attracted me because I had very little knowledge of it. And I just, I always remember thinking that their helmets were so cool. And how do you get there? How do you, how do you, I, I don't know how to get to college, but um, I know that junior A is the way that I'm going to go right now because I'm 16 and I don't have a, a Western League team to, that has my rights. So Michigan and Colorado College were always my, uh, that, those were my dream schools. Um, Colorado College was because uh, Chad Hartnell had been there. He was a former Blazer. 
Um, uh, Devin Hartnell had went to Michigan Tech. You know, there was there was guys that had went on to Alaska. Cody Botel, I think, uh, went to Alaska. And Notre Dame was Terry Lorenz. So you, you always heard of guys coming out of our organization, going to schools, and that was how uh, I was going to do it. Well, Chris, I, I appreciate you taking this time with us, and uh, best of luck to yourself and the Bobcats in this upcoming season. All right. Thanks a lot for having me on. The latest devastating impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on the airline industry as WestJet lays off 1,700 of its pilots amid the unprecedented reduction in the demand for air travel. 700 of the pilots will be laid off effective May 1st, with another 1,000 off of job on June 1st. The cuts will affect the most recently recruited pilots, with the company saying they are making the difficult decisions needed to weather the crisis. The airline has grounded three quarters of its fleet and suspended international flights until at least May. Welcome back. Take a look at your 70 forecast here. Just as we head wrap up the show here, Friday will sit at three degrees with the daytime high, mostly cloudy skies. We'll have minus three uh, degrees overnight. Heading into Saturday, though, my, uh, two degrees is our daytime high and a low there of minus three as we could see a 55% chance of some snow there. As we head into the new week, though, Sunday sitting at five degrees with mostly cloudy skies. Sunday will warm up, Monday, excuse me, will warm up a little bit uh, in the morning as well with a low of one. 14 on Tuesday as we start to get into some double digit temperatures here. So with a high there of 14 and then mostly sunny skies and a bit of cloud coverage. 12 on Wednesday with a low of 3 degrees and 8 degrees on Thursday with mostly cloudy skies.